Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Black Rue back with another video. Before we get started, cue my guy Indigo Saint. Let's get it. Indigo Saint in the building. Black Rue investing. Let's go. Miss Believer was Black Rue investing. With your money, you ain't gotta be guessing. Prophets is what we manifest. So we binge on a black who invested. This believer was black who invested. Got course in this race, we invested. We got stocks, we got crypto with a blessing. So thank God for that black who invested. This believer was black who invested. My man indigo. Alright guys, so you can catch me on Gentleman of Crypto every um Wednesday. I changed it to Wednesday now. Um, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, and you can catch me on a gentleman crypto also Saturday mornings, uh, 9:30 Pacific Standard Time. You can also catch me on Benzinga every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today we're going to talk about um, LCX. All right, it's been a while since I made an LCX video. They have a new project that I'm very excited about. Um, usually I'm more excited about DAG projects, um, but they finally have a new a new project they're launching in their, li in their launch pad that I'm really excited about. So um, let's go over that. And before we uh, continue, guys, be very, very uh, on the lookout on the channel. We're going to start bringing on some guests. Um, we just did a... Um, we just did a video with Underdog Crypto here. Let me bring up the channel. So if you want to come to the channel, like and subscribe. All you got to do is come over here, darkhorsewatcher.com. Put that in. It will lead you directly to the channel as soon as it loads here where you can like and subscribe. Um, we'll come back to that when it loads. But yeah, so LCX. Let's uh, give them a look here. They have a revamp that's coming up, and they have a cool little video. We're going to watch it. It's only about 30 seconds. We're going to bring it up here, and here we go. So. Revamp is coming? Yeah, it's coming our way. Wow. Finally, and it's more user-friendly. Yes, it'll offer a better experience. I'm going to pause because they, they go too fast for this. It'll offer a very better experience. Improved login process. Scalable trading engine. Faster and automated withdrawals. Wow, wow. It'll be a whole new experience. Typing. Yeah, everything will be, in, be on your fingertips. October 10th, 2022. Yippee! Starstruck, starstruck, rocket! Enjoy LCX verse. Can't wait! LCX revamp coming on 10th of October 2022. Alright, so that's cool. It needed a little ramp. It needed a. Oh god. I don't like that music. I don't know who's responsible for choosing their music. Um, yeah, so they needed a little revamp. Um, we're going to go over, we're just going to touch on Tangent a little bit. Um, um, HBAR also has a Tangent. I don't know why these two, like, like why people choose the same names. It's so silly. But, um, yeah, so this Tangent is not the one I'm excited about. We're going to go over that later. We're just going to touch on Tangent really quickly they're going to offer an nft launch pad oh excuse me um you're going to be able to stake your artwork and they're also going to offer grants for um people who want to do nfts so that's pretty cool and it's going to be on um ada but last or not least um galileo now this one i'm very excited about and this is going to be on quant okay um, Galileo introduces NFTs for physical assets. So um, I know what you're you're thinking, like, okay, why would we need NFTs for physical assets? I can just go on eBay and Amazon and buy whatever I want. But this is like NFTs for luxury assets, stuff like watches, stuff like real estate, stuff like cars, stuff like paintings, 
stuff like gold bars and precious metals and jewelry. So they're offering your honor NFT precious assets, okay? Um, somewhat sort of similar to like how LCX already has TMNs. Um, now imagine now, okay, NFT in your cars, NFT your paintings, NFT your gold bars, NFT your luxury watches, not like a Casio or whatever, right? Um, so this is pretty cool. And um, this is going to be built on Quant, another one of the cryptos that are ISO 20022 compliant. And if we come over here and take a look at their white paper, which I think is very, very cool, some of the questions that I have, and I'm sure you have too, um, we can answer. Okay, let's see here. Where is that white paper? Here we go. So, one of the questions that they, they solve here is the problem statements. I like this. So, so one thing before we get to the problem statements, one of the things I wanted to know is, okay, so how are you gonna how are you gonna do the assets? So Galileo Network will choose organizations, and I hate that they use this S instead of a Z. We use a Z in America for this stuff, but anyways, uh, specializing again <laughs> in the uh, safeguarding of critical assets. Our asset custody partners protect Galileo and its affiliates' physical assets in properly insured and audited facilities until redeemed. We will select several of the world's most reputable safety, uh, safety deposit boxes when required. Galileo's um, customers pay a specific percentage of the item's value annually to cover storage costs. Users need not to use physical equipment to protect their goods and can trade them easily over the internet. So I'm assuming like if you want to sell an asset there, they have to then, okay, you sell it, but they're going to take custody of it, verify it before they even put it on a platform. So these, these organizations, whoever they choose, these are going to be organizations to come by, verify the assets are real before they actually then, you know, start selling pieces of the asset. Um, our asset custody partners protect Galileo and its in its um, affiliates physical assets and insured and audited facilities. So that's pretty cool because um, that was one of my questions like, okay, how are they going to do this? How are you going to really cut down on fraud if, you know, you're just assuming that this asset is real? So that's cool. And you can also redeem the asset. So that's one thing. Users can purchase a PNFT from the market and choose to leave the physical asset at the Galileo Partners storage facilities as long as they desire. And like you said uh, above, you might have to pay a little fee for that um, if you choose to do that. They can also utilize the redemption system to take physical ownership of the underlying asset. Just like with Tiamans, you can, um, if you bought it, you could take custody of the Tiaman. You have to pay them to ship it to you or you can come pick it up in Liechtenstein if you're over there. But um, yeah, so by using the redemption system, which has several benefits, the holder of the PNFT can redeem their asset at any time, whether it's a watch, a car, or a piece of art, or have it delivered to their home via a Galileo mandated partner to ensure the security of the asset during delivery. So they're not just going to give it to your cousin. You know what I mean? They'll, they have to give it to a partner that they know, okay, it's going to securely reach you. And, you know, um, they are giving, they are given exposure to the underlying uh, physical asset. The, who is they? Um, I don't know what, how, how they, what's the benefit here? Okay. I don't know how they just say they are giving exposure to the underlying physical asset. I don't know what that means. But anyways, um, the fee, maybe it will become clearer as we read it. The PNFT remains in existence for the lifetime of the underlying asset, regardless of the asset's location. So I guess it still remains an NFT. Even if you redeem it, it can still be kind of a physical NFT. Um, the, the physical NFT still remains in existence. A, cert a certified partner can appraise the underlying asset and the owner can update the PNFT accordingly. So say like it's a car, 
you know, you you take assets, you re, re, redeem it, the the NFT will still re, exist and say then like after two years you want to like sell the asset away back on a on Galileo protocol, then they'll have somebody come over and praise it. Okay, now it's two years older. Okay, of course it's probably worth less because it's a car and you used it for two years. So yeah. Now fractionalization. This is another thing. This is kind of cool and kind of like a little messy at the same point because what happens then if you're like, um, okay, you buy a piece of this, right? What if you want to take a loan out on it, and what if you default on part of your fractionalization? That's that's a pretty like I don't know I don't know how that will work. I don't know if they would offer loans on fractionalizations. Uh, maybe they will because that's something they could do and earn more money because if you default they just own it again and they just sell it again I don't know so I don't know if they'll offer loans on fractionalizations but anyways uh, fractionalization and again with that s instead of a z device ownership of an asset so that many parties receive benefits according to the quantity they own for instance Mr. Smith spends 20000 on a Rolex watch. He may sell 50% of his watch's value on the Galileo market for $10,000. So part of this is like, we went over this with Opulus. I don't remember if you guys remember, but um, Nas sold part of his ownership rights to one of his records. So he sold 50% out to people. So he tokenized part of the ownership of his record. I wonder if we can bring that up really quickly. Uh, go to Royal right quick. Okay. This would be a good good example of something like, because we're tokenizing everything, even like masters, quote unquote masters. If you guys are familiar with hip hop, that's what Jay-Z and all the likes call them masters, right? So he sold part of his masters to his song. So if we go to Nas and his single, so he sold 50% ownership of this. So he got 50, like he might, the amount raised was like 3,069K. I don't know if all of that went to Nas or if, you know, I'm sure it's like part, most of it went to Nas and some of it went to Royal, right? Because they, they're setting this whole thing up. But Nas gets, you know, like you know whatever whatever his cut was probably the lion's share like 350 or whatever so Nas gets three three hundred fifty k up front he still has 50 percent ownership of his record and now fifth like other people own part of Nas's masters just the same thing like you know like an NBA team like you know um people own parts of the NBA team like quote unquote let me use a name that's been in the news Robert Sarver he earned, owns like 35% of the Suns but you know other people own part of it so it's just like the same principle that we're talking about here um, so okay is this no this is not what we're looking for okay so so he sold so Mr. Smith sold Tim uh, 50% uh, of his ownership, which is 10K. He may set a minimum purchase requirement of $100. So one or more users are eligible to um, get the remaining 50%. So if he sets a minimum purchase requirement of $100, he could have 10 people. Um, is that right? 10 people? No. 10 people would be 1,000. So he could have 100 people um, purchase it for purchase ownership for $100. A hundred people for a hundred for a uh, hundred dollars, right? Or um, he could say minimum purchase requirement is a hundred dollars, and somebody just comes and buys like a whole half of the watch. Now it's going to be kind of like weird because it's like okay, with the Nas song, it makes a little bit more sense because okay, you buy a Nas song, you expect his song to kind of appreciate, and and you can go out here and tell people, oh, this song is the greatest, listen to it. And you're going to make money just by advertising and promoting the song. Because the more people listen to it, the more streams it gets, the more money you make. Now, on this, on, on this, on this deal over here, 
it's a little bit more tricky. Where are we? It's a little bit more tricky because it's like, okay, and I keep moving away from my mic. I'm sorry, y'all. It's more tricky because it's like, okay, how much is a Rolex watch going to appreciate? But then if you're buying 50% of a painting, like a Van Gogh or something like that, then maybe you're more apt to do 50% of that. Or if you're buying 50% of a home, of a house, of real estate, you know, the way the housing market is right now, maybe you might want to buy 50% of real estate because the next time we have a booming house market, then your money is going to go up. So it's a, it's a little bit of a give and a take here. Like you really have to understand if 50% of that asset really means something. So consequent, subsequently, subsequently, uh, the fractions are transmitted to the user's wallet while the PNFT is locked by a smart contract and may only be traded and sold by a user who has accumulated all of the fractions. So just like you buy like 50% of the watch, the watch is just sitting in there. Nobody can, you know, nobody can use the watch until somebody owns 50, 100% of the watch, then they can redeem it, right? So, so yeah, again, I told you guys it's built, built on quant. Um, one of the reasons they build it on quant because a renewed focus on quant and CBDCs, Quant Network aims to facilitate open access to digital currencies issued by central banks. So in this, um, again, guys, come on over to my uh, channel and you can watch if you want to know about CBDCs. I have tons of videos on CBDCs and CBDCs and quant. I have videos on that and I also have videos on ISO um, 202 uh, cryptos, 20022 cryptos. So you definitely want to kind of check that out. Um, that'll give you more of a deeper understanding about ISO 2002 uh, cryptos. Um, so uh, Quant is one of those cryptos. Um, so so yeah, but um, let's go back here. So that's that's a really important thing because this can be done internationally because it's built on Quant because they kind of have that ISO standard. So I'm not going to get too deep into that. Check that out on the video. I like this problem statement. I want to go over this problem statement a little bit. So investors increasingly seek to park their wealth um, in, in alternative asset classes such as real estate, luxury losses, gold to hedge against inflation. They actually admit inflation, unlike <laughs> certain people, excuse me, and unstable economic situations. Most of these asset classes are liquid by their very nature and, tip, and typically have substantial entry costs. So basically what they're saying is they're kind of giving people alternative um, assets to uh, park their wealth in. Cryptocurrencies have emerged as an alternative store of value. However, the crypto market is volatile and cyclical. I'm glad that they say that it's cyclical. Um, and just saying it gets volatile, right? Because it is cyclical. It's like every four years, right? Um, and two of those years are bullish, two of them are bearish, it seems so far. Um, in addition, cryptocurrency investors cannot leverage their holdings to acquire physical assets until they leave the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So basically, it's saying like, okay, you can use your crypto as a store value, but now you can kind of ledger, um, leverage it. Um, you can leverage your holdings to acquire like physical assets with this. Globalization and the rise, and you're also diversifying too by uh, leverage by getting the physical assets. Your physical assets now diversify, so you're not just in crypto. You're in crypto and physical assets. Globalization and the rise of e-commerce have accelerated the production of counterfeit goods, a significant problem for consumers and the global economy. Most luxury items seized by the law enforcement are luxury watches and leather goods. Okay, so they do have a, a, a thing about counterfeit goods. They're, they're like Rolex watches, of course, are a lot of times counterfeited. Um, you know, there's so there's so many counterfeit type of deals um, here. So, yeah, this is a benefit. So 
I'm really excited about this Galileo. Um, one of the things that we need to note here, guys, is this is their roadmap and this is where they're at. So understand 2022 quarter three, quarter four, company legal status release of Galileo MVP recruitment development, receives fundraising, commercial brands and products, or commercial brands and partnerships, deployment of uh, sales representatives in Europe. So the, the, the marketplace is not going to be launched till the earliest 2023 quarter one, quarter two. And sometimes these guys like do like push things back. So this is their best guess. Launch of the marketplace, listing of the, the coin on sex and the decks, smart um, contract engine, launch of uh, Leo X rewards and staking, Galileo mobile launch for Apple and Android, deployment of sales representatives in Europe, commercial brands and partnerships. So it seems like they mostly want to kind of have sales on this in Europe. Um, I don't, I don't. Um, so I don't know if that means that you won't be able to do it in America, but they keep saying sales in Europe. So I don't know if that means you won't be able to do it in America. I don't know. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Pretty, 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 pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think about Galileo. I'm pretty high on these. I'm, yeah, I'm, I think it's a pretty good idea. Put it that way. Uh, they're going to have to flesh out a little bit more of this. Um, I, I don't want to say I'm pretty high on them because I'm, I'm really high on DAG. I'm really high on LCX. But this concept seems really, really cool to me. Um, so let me say I'm high on the concept. Um, and I'll say really high for, for, for stuff like uh, DAG and LCX. Things that have so many things in place. But... This concept seems very sound to me, and over time, if they can deliver on their concept, I think this could be pretty cool. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments, and uh, check out some of my previous videos over here. This was a little long one for y'all. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. And special thanks for those who stuck around till the very end. Have a good one, guys. Peace.